Hello my friends, Saladar again and seems like we witnessed the end of the drama that was ongoing for the town for the few days. I predicted it from the very beginning that uh, Russia will take the Saladar city because the reinforcements were sent very late and Russians already were in the town suburbs so we're here in this area so from this position obviously it's very easy to encircle the city however it was not easy for them and they admit that they have severe losses for that attack but they achieved their goal they've took the biggest town since i think lysychansk and severodonetsk that were captured by the russian army during the summer time so one more achievement but i would say it's the achievement of the russian army rather than wagner group Ukrainian command continued to say that the fight for the Saladar continues but my friends we don't have Ukrainian forces in Saladar any longer I told you about the situation with our guys who were trapped there yesterday according to the information from the CNN I got tons of comments saying that I shouldn't trust CNN but uh, those are the only reporters the international reporters who were in Saladar before and now they're around four kilometers away from the city and today they've confirmed that they saw how our guys went from the Saladar alive. So it's a good sign. It means that our forces are not trapped there any longer. So yes, the group that was abandoned yesterday, they went out from the city. And I guess this operation was conducted by Ukrainian forces. And I'm very grateful for the international media that rose the topic of our soldiers uh, that were trapped in the Solidar city. So that is why probably our military command decided to conduct this evacuation operation uh, to get our guys away from the trap in Solidar. Yeah, CNN, they have their own policy, but my friends, their journalists are actually in that place very close to solidar so they can actually see what is happening and partially it's correct the fighting for the solidar continues the ukrainian army continue to use their artillery systems and rocket artillery systems i'm gonna publish the video on my telegram channel by the way my friends subscribe for me over there to be updated on the current situation i publish there everything about ukraine and not only so i'm gonna publish the video you'll see how wagner soldiers are just demolished in Solidar with the help of the Heimers but we don't have lots of the Heimerses that is why we're quite limited in the use of those systems because I got some of the comments saying that Ukraine should use Heimers Heimers yes but we don't have lots of the Heimerses that's the big issue and we are limited in their usage so I guess we need to switch for the satellite image uh, this is the Solidar and here we have just this area it's not yet been taken by the russian forces or it's better to say wagner forces and the fighting is continued there as well and also i'm going to delete uh, this stuff and we're going to move on the upper side so here uh you can see this is Seoul village uh, Seoul means salt basically and this is the railway station there it's kind of important part of the all of those settlements in that area so the fighting is continued for that area and also for this one still Wagner soldiers have their artillery systems and they push hard but it's hard to say whether they'll be able to take uh this uh, railway station or not so you may think that it's the great victory for the Wagner soldiers actually not the Solidar victory was stolen from them by the regular Russian army yesterday the Russian army officials say that there were the regular Russian army divisions uh, that were used to free the Solidar liberate that area and that just drove Wagner's mad I checked out their groups and from the comments that they wrote my friends I think their biggest enemy is not Ukraine but the Russian army itself and today after many of the complaints of the Wagner soldiers and their supporters and probably the part of the Russian elite that supports Prigozhin finally the Russian army put uh, the Wagner but at the very end of the briefing and just on the telegram and today Prigozhin said that he will not comment on the situation with their stolen victory because the boat is already shaking he said this the boat is shaking it means that they have the deep conflict between the official Russian army and the Wagner soldiers and also with the new chiefs of the Russian army the conflict will be deeper 
Gerasimov. He's so hated by the Wagner group and they use uh, many bad words in his address. But Gerasimov now is controlling all of the forces that are used in operation, let's say, in Ukraine, including Wagner group. So he is the chief of Prigozhin right now. And General Sorovikin was dismissed. He was supporting Wagner. Gerasimov was put. And what's interesting about this guy that he was responsible for all of that military operation of Russia that they conducted it in February last year. It was his crazy idea to attack Ukraine from the six independent directions with the forces that were not enough to capture the vast territories. The only place where they were successful is on the south part of Ukraine, but not because of the Russian army, but because the Ukrainian army wasn't prepared for that scenario. And under his command, Ukraine was able to free the Kiev region, Kharkiv, Sumy, Chernigiv and other parts. Later Sorovikin was put, he was there in position for three months. All of the Russians were saying that he's the mighty general and now he's dismissed with this again. One more loser, General Lapin, was upgraded to the commander of the Russian ground forces and he's also a great enemy to the Wagner group. So what I think is happening here, my friends, that Putin is promoting his own generals. They are not very talented, but he trust them. At the same time, uh, the regular Russian army doesn't fight well. Uh, the only force, as you can see, is capable to get the towns under control and some of the territory is the Wagner group. They are well organized, they have better equipment, they have better, let's say, morale and discipline within the Wagner group and, as you can see, they can win. But the Russian army can just take this victory. So Prigozhin said before, like two days already, he's saying that the only Wagner soldiers were involved in liberation of the Solidar. But for Putin, I think Prigozhin is a great competitor for the power. Because Putin is just sitting in Moscow most time in his bunker, afraid to go to the front lines. And here you can see that Prigozhin is visiting the front lines. He's speaking with his soldiers. He's at the age and he knows what is happening. And also I think that Prigozhin is uh, more honest compared to the regular Russian army officials. Uh, regular Russian army say that they destroyed many Hymerses and even Bradleys and that Ukrainian army is just running away from the Solidar. At the same time Prigozhin said no, Ukrainian army is fighting for the Solidar. He said about it like three days ago that it's very hard for the Wagner group to fight there, that Wagner group had losses. And there were tons of the videos with Prigozhin that he actually showed his dead soldiers in uh, those packages or whatever. So he claims that they have severe losses. Yes, he said it's usual for the war. So he is our enemy, obviously. But I think we have more respect from him and compared to the regular Russian army, which is actually, they are just clowns. And why the Solidar operation was successful for Wagner? Because they used trained soldiers rather than prisoners for this particular operation. And they used prisoners basically as the cannon fodder, mostly, as it happens in Bahmut. But here they were more successful. So since the summertime, we witnessed with you how Prigozhin gained some of the duties of the Russian president. He actually went to the Russian prisons and was able to cancel all of the legal jurisdictions over the prisoners and prisoners are getting just released to fight for the Wagner group and if they survive for six months they got their freedom but according to the constitution the only right uh, to mercy the prisons to release them belongs just to president and also Prigozhin interfered the elections in United States and that's why he's wanted by United States officials and they put some sort of the reward for his not the head but if someone will stay his position and he will be captured but I think he will stay in Russia and will not be captured so you see how powerful this guy really is and Putin feels uncomfortable with it then I check out the Russian media resources. I see that Prigozhin there got many more good points compared to the current Russian president. Russian military bloggers support him, all of the correspondents on the front lines and basically soldiers. And you have to be blind not to see this big conflict between the official Russian army and the Wagner group. And I'm very happy that they have this conflict because for Ukraine, it's great.
and we're gonna see how this conflict develops in the future but from today's progressions uh, reaction i may say that he lost i think temporary because he basically lost the most part of his army in bahmut and Soledar. maybe it was the plan of the russian administration to let the wagner group uh, to lose their army in bahmut and Soledar. they have severe losses and now progression has less power with less army who knows but what we see here that because of the Wagner, Putin have to put incompetent uh, managers in his army. Those are his friends, but they're in lack of competence and they will lose everything. And I'm sure that Russia is gaining resources to strike Ukraine again, probably during the spring time. They will announce massive mobilization once again, it's 100%. Today, they rose the maximum age for the newcomers, privates uh, to the Russian army, which is obligatory. It was 27 and became 30 years old, so they will have more pool of the people. Plus, they cancel the restriction for the Russian fathers. If you have many kids, it doesn't matter. You'll go and serve in Russian army. You'll be mobilized also today one of the main belarusian general announced that they will close the borders for some of the belarusian men since february it shows that there could be mobilization in belarusia as well so they will create lots of the forces lots of the resources to attack ukraine once again but with lapin and gerasimov obviously russian army will lose this war probably the only way for russia to win is to put maybe wagner group in charge of their army but Putin will never do it. If he does it, he will just lose his power. So yes, Wagner and Russian army are our enemies. And the best case scenario for Ukraine is the civil war in Russia between Wagner and regular Russian army. It seems unrealistic for now, but my friends, we're gonna see. We're gonna see. Okay, this morning I told that the Ukrainian army left the Solidar. I was happy about it because yesterday they were trapped. And I was sent with that video by mostly my Ukrainian subscribers. So the call sign of this guy is Magyar. He claims to be in Solidar and he's filming from the same position for two days. But he is not filming from his camera or something. He films from the drone. He said that we are flying in Solidar, you see. Uh, but if you're familiar with with the DJI software you'll see that the battery here you see this amber arc and the red arc so the further you fly the longer it is showing that you'll have the critical battery to return home and from this picture I may say that this drone is kind of far away from his position and he's not in Saladar I think that he's near to the city and says that the Ukrainian army continued to fight for Saladar as I say to you partially it's true because we continue to use artillery systems but there are no any troops inside the Solidar. and yes with that screenshot i may say that the drone is very far away the distance is 3477 meters the altitude i think is 740 meters for altitude uh, the numbers are blurred it's hard to say and if you say to me that I open some sort of the secrets, positions, etc., uh, my friends, uh, those guys published the video on open sources and I got it from the open sources. For me, I want to find out that our soldiers were evacuated from Solidar or not. That is why I dig deeper and here I am state that our soldiers are not in Solidar according to this video. They were left abandoned yesterday. Luckily today they evacuated and I'm showing to you that Yes, our soldiers, including this guy, they are not in Solidar. And that's why I was very satisfied with the message from the CNN. You may hate this resource, you may like this resource, but they are there on the front lines. They are journalists and they witnessed, uh, witnessed that the Ukrainian forces, uh, troops went out from the Solidar afternoon. So this afternoon on Friday in what appeared to be an organized pullback. Organized. It means that our military command finally evacuated our soldiers from that place it's the great stuff my friends it shows that our military command takes care about our soldiers but i think it happened just after cnn wrote about it in their yesterday's article so they say there were no any sense of panic nothing our forces just left that area could be negotiations with wagner who knows the main thing is to save our guys from solidar
But this is what the Russian peace looks like. They destroyed the Artemisil uh, salt mine factory, the biggest one in Europe. It's just demolished by the artillery fire. Most of the buildings in the city have been destroyed. However, from the information I have, there were around 300 civilians who stayed in the city. I wonder why they didn't choose to evacuate, but uh, from our side, we cannot force people to leave their homes. Our soldiers cannot grab them out from their houses. It's uh, against the law. So if they want to stay, we cannot do anything with it. And they stayed there and luckily many of them survived, I hope. The German defense minister resigned from her position. You may Google her name. I just forgot honestly and she appeared to be one of the most hated officials in germany by the german society i wonder why then i post this on telegram i got some of the nice comments from the germany public saying that it was a good will gesture from her side and it's great that she resigned if you support it it means that it's okay and probably leopard deal was involved in that case we don't know uh, many of the things that happened behind the curtains and germany will announce the decision uh, next week to supply tanks to ukraine according to the bloomberg article we got this information and next week there's going to be the rammstein meeting so probably it's going to be announced on 20th of january which is awesome and our minister of the foreign affairs kuleba said that five of the countries are already ready to transfer the leopard 2 tanks to ukraine and i'm also sure that united kingdom will transfer their challenger 2 tanks to ukraine as well that's awesome and more awesome news italian government approved the transfer of samp t air defense systems those are very effective <laughs> russia again begs for the peace talks with the ukraine this time direct peace talks before they say that ukraine is not a sovereign country that ugly saxons are controlling us so why should you have the direct peace talks with ukraine if we control by other countries as you can see russia is always into the conspiracy theories and that came out from the international ministry foreign affairs of the russian federation and it happened simultaneously with the united nations address uh, from the beza representative of the russia in the united nations he also said that russia wants the peace talks as soon as possible but we all know that it's just a temporary solution if fighting stops uh, it will let russia to reinforce their army and attack ukraine with the new forces we don't need that and china continue to support russia they say that the supplement of the weaponry to ukraine will deteriorate the situation and may escalate the situation into to the higher level of confrontation yeah communists are always on the same side and now i just want to show you the timeline of the solidar drama and how it's over today so russians were very close and every day they went closer and closer by this time i already say that we need to get out from the solidar it's too late to send the new reinforcements uh, and luckily today we were able to evacuate from that area and now Russia is advancing towards Krasna Hora, the small village on the southwest part from the Solidar city. Blahadatna is still under control by Ukrainian forces and the railway station here as well. So we lost this battle but not the war and I'm sure that Russia has no chances to reach their strategic goal to get control all over Ukraine. No, it will never happen and Ukraine will free the territory from the russian occupiers my friends i'm going to keep you updated on situation in ukraine if you want to support this channel just press the like button if you want to support me financially there are some of the links in the video description below you may support me on patreon paypal or donatella whichever is more convenient for you thank you so much for your help i wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time